Hello and welcome to the SoundTraining.net Cisco ASA Security Appliance Step-by-Step -step Configuration video. My name is Don Crawley. I'm President, Chief Technologist at SoundTraining.net. This video is based on my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance, a Step-by-Step -step Configuration Guide, now available on Amazon.com, and it is based on version 8.3 of the ASA software. Here we go. This video is going to talk about Cisco ASA remote management options, and it's uh, based on Chapter 4 in the book. We're going to cover both uh, remote console access and remote graphical access. Um, with console access, we'll talk about Telnet and SSH, or Secure Shell. And when we cover the remote graphical access, we'll be talking about using the ASDM, or the Adaptive Security Device Manager. When we talk about remote console access, we're talking about two different options. One is Telnet and one is SSH. Telnet is a legacy um, protocol. It's one of the early TCP IP services. Operates over TCP port 23. It permits remote console access to a variety of systems going all the way back to early Unix systems today uh, used perhaps with Linux systems or network devices uh, from various vendors. The thing that you have to know about Telnet and this is important, is it is totally non-secure. Your entire session is in clear text. If somebody's running Wireshark or any other kind of uh, packet capture, monitor uh, utility, they're going to be able to see everything you're doing, including your authentication as well as the entire session. If you've never seen how this works, there's a demonstration of it, uh, the non-secure nature of Telnet, in a video that I made. It's available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash soundtraining. Now, in order to use Telnet, you must explicitly enable it on the ASA before it will accept connections. A lot of times people say, well, gee, if it's so non-secure, why on earth would you use it? And the answer to that is you really shouldn't, but there are times where it may be the only option. Maybe you're using somebody else's computer, they don't have an SSH client or whatever, but uh, there are times where you may have to use it. And in order to do that, you have to explicitly enable it on the ASA. Explicitly, explicitly enabling it means two things. One, designating the permitted host or network, and two, specifying the password. Now, there is a default password, which is Cisco. Um, obviously, you probably want to change that to, to something other than the default. One other comment on this. Windows, by default, uh, includes a Telnet client, but it is not enabled. It's not installed, so you have to install it. It's fairly simple. If you want to use Telnet from the command line in Windows, uh, I have a better suggestion for you, but just in case, I'll show you how to enable this. Uh, let's take a look at, first of all, you go into your control panel. This is on Windows 7. It's similar on XP or, or Vista or, or whatever operating system you're running from Microsoft. And you're going to choose the option to uh, go to Programs and Features, and then you'll turn Windows features on or off. Notice how that's highlighted here. Once you do that, then it's going to bring up this window. Uh, it'll take a while to appear, uh, which is why I'm not doing it as a live demonstration, because it really does. It takes several minutes for it to fill in all of the options there. You'll check the box labeled Telnet Client. Click OK. It's going to whir for, again, a couple of minutes. takes a while to do this. And then you'll have the Telnet Client installed, and you can activate it simply by going to a command prompt on Windows and typing Telnet followed by the IP address or the URL of the device that you want to connect to. Now, what I usually use instead is the PuTTY Telnet client or the PuTTY SSH client, and, and that's what we're going to be using for the demonstrations in a moment, but this is just in case you wanted to be able to enable it uh, in Windows command line. Now, we talked about Telnet. A better option, if it's available to you, is SSH or Secure Shell. SSH operates over TCP port 22, and unlike Telnet, where everything is in the clear, uh, with SSH, it provides strong authentication and encryption both. Now, there's no native Windows SSH client, so you're going to have to install a third-party client. The one I recommend is PuTTY. There are many other SSH clients available, such as TerraTerm or Procom Plus or Secure CRT. Some are free, some are commercial, but uh, again, the one I typically use is PuTTY, and you can download it for free at www.putty.org. Now, like Telnet, SSH is not enabled by default on the ASA. You must configure it. There are three steps. You have to generate the RSA key pair. You have to designate permitted hosts or network by IP address, and then you have to specify a password. Let's go ahead and configure the ASA to accept incoming Telnet connections, then we'll configure it to accept incoming SSH connections. Uh, this is a fairly simple process, but you do have to connect to your ASA via the serial port in order to do this, and that's what I've done already. So let's go ahead and hit uh, the uh, Enable command and put in our password. 
And now we're going to go into configuration mode, config T. And I'm going to uh, use uh, just uh, three commands. So we'll do telnet. And we're going to specify that we can come in from the 192.168.200.0 network with a 24-bit mask. And we also have to specify the interface to which we're connected. And we're going to connect to the inside interface. By the way, you cannot... Um, enable Telnet on the outside interface of an ASA. Um, there, there actually is a workaround by setting up a, a, an encrypted connection, but we're not going to get into that. So if you want to do Telnet, you really need to be on the inside network, and it needs to be a trusted network. Now we need to specify our password. Like I said, there's a default password, but we don't want to use that. So we'll say P-A-S-S-W-D. That's a Unix-style command for you Unix or, or Linux users. And then we're going to specify the password, so p at s s five six seven eight. And uh, let's also set the Telnet timeout. Now, it defaults to a timeout of five minutes. Um, and, you know, that may be fine for you. Just I just want to show you how to do this. So I'm going to set it to 10 minutes. So Telnet timeout 10. And now it's got a timeout of 10 minutes. And now we should be ready to, to go ahead and give this a try. So let's come up and create a new session. So I'm going to click on New Session. And let me specify Telnet. Let's put in the IP address of the device, which is at 192.168.200.1. And we'll go ahead and click on Open. I'll bring this down where it's a little easier to see. And I'll enter the password. And voila, I'm in. So there's Telnet. Let's go ahead and exit out. Oh, you, you know, you can do all the usual stuff here. If I wanted to go into privilege mode, I could do that and, and so on. But I don't want to do that for the purpose of the demonstration. We'll go ahead and exit out. And let's go back and configure SSH now. So uh, the process is much the same with one exception. And, and it's a key exception, pun fully intended, by the way, because we have to configure the RSA key. So let's do crypto key generate RSA modulus, I can abbreviate it mod, but I'll go ahead and spell it out, modulus 1024. Now, let me explain what that is. Uh, the crypto is just invoking the cryptographic services. Key means that I'm going to be doing something with a key. I'm going to generate an RSA. RSA is the key type. The modulus is the key length. Um, and I'm going to choose 1024. That's a fairly reasonably uh, long key. I could go longer, but it adds overhead, more processing power. I could go shorter, but it's not quite as secure. So we'll go with a, a, a modulus or a key length of 1024 bits. It's generating the key pair right now. And uh, as soon as that's done, which it is now, we'll do a couple more things. We're going to do a command similar to what we did with Telnet. We're going to do SSH to 192.168.200.0, again with a 24-bit mask uh, on the inside uh, network. And so that allows any, anybody who is on the inside interface, connected to the inside interface, uh, whose IP address is on the 192.168.200 subnet to use Telnet. Or to use SSH. Now, they still have to obviously have the credentials in order to get in. Uh, you may want to narrow that down for your network. I kind of like to have it open uh, on most of the networks, but if I'm, if I'm on a network um, where there's a, a need for a lot of security, and I've done some work with the military, for example, um, and you want to get very specific, so maybe you would just specify an individual node, an individual host in that case. But uh, again, that's your choice. Uh, you got to base it on, on your particular situation. Let's also uh, do the uh, timeout. So this time we're going to do SSH timeout 10. Now, I don't have to set a password because the command would be exactly the same one that I used uh, before. Um, and so the Telnet password will work for us to get into uh, the uh, system using SSH. So we should be ready to do it. Let's go ahead and give it a try. We'll come up and click on New Session. And this time I'm going to just leave it set to SSH. Notice that it uh, sets it to port 22 by default. And let's go ahead and put in the IP address, 192.168.200.1. And we'll click on Open. Now it's going to throw up in a warning here. And this is just saying, hey, um, you know, you've never connected to this uh, host before. Are you sure you know who you're connecting to? And, and I think I do. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but, you know, something to be aware of. Um, Notice that it's now prompting me for a login username. Now, I didn't specify one, but it has a default username for SSH sessions, and it's, it's kind of funky what it is. It's PIX. 
So this harkens back to the days of the old PIX firewall. Not sure why they still use that. Let's go ahead and enter the uh, same password that we used for Telnet. And now we're in. Now, the difference between SSH and Telnet, again, is that with Telnet, everything is in plain text. You can see everything. It's all going on. And with SSH, can't see anything. It's all encrypted. So, that is configuring SSH and Telnet. Let's go ahead and exit out of this. And we'll go back. Now, there's one more way that we can do remote uh, access to our Cisco ASA, and that is with the GUI, which is also known as the ASDM, the Adaptive Security Device Manager. Now, it's configured by default, um, so uh, you probably aren't going to need to modify anything, but you do need to know how it's configured just in case you change IP addresses, something uh, uh, is different with your network. You just need to be aware of it. So let's do a show run HTTP, and there it shows us the configuration for uh, allowing connections via the ASDM. Now this is a little funky because um, it says HTTP server, which would, would imply that it's coming across port 80, but it's not. It's actually using 443, and it's actually HTTPS, but the command to invoke it is HTTP server enable, and then just like with SSH and Telnet, you have to specify the subnet network or the node that is allowed to connect. So there you can see it's HTTP 192.168.200.0 uh, with the 24-bit mask on the inside subnet. Um, and let's just go ahead and connect to using the, uh, the browser so you can see how it works. So I'll come down here and I'm going to type in HTTPS and then 192.168.200.1. Opens up the browser, throws off a, a, an SSL warning uh, because it, uh, it doesn't recognize the, the uh, certificate. But we're just going to be like in the Wizard of Oz and pay no attention to that warning. And there it is. Um, and we could go ahead and install the launcher and run ASDM, but that's really not the point of the demonstration. I don't want you to have to sit and watch that, so we won't. But that, that's something you certainly could do couple more things I want to show you. Um, let's take a look at the configurations for SSH. So show run SSH. There it shows the configuration that we did. And we can do the same thing with Telnet. Show run Telnet. Other thing that's kind of cool is let's do a show um, SSH. So it just says, okay, you can use both versions 1 and 2. Uh, there's the timeout and, and kind of the same information except that it's showing the uh, version numbers as well. So that's um, a summary of how you connect on uh, the uh, ASA. You can use either SSH, Telnet, or um, the ASDM, Adaptive Security Device Manager. If you'd like any additional resources, obviously I'm going to recommend my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance, a step-by-step -step configuration guide. It's available on Amazon and, of course, through other channels as well. If you have a preferred bookseller, uh, please pick up a copy. And, and by the way, this video that you just watched is based almost verbatim on uh, Chapter 4 of the book. Other resources, check out my blog at www.soundtraining.net slash blog. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, which you may be on right now. Uh, also, you can uh, become a fan on Facebook, facebook.com slash soundtraining.net. Follow us on Twitter, and of course, visit our website at www.soundtraining.net to learn about our training programs and other resources available for IT professionals. Hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching. My name's Don Crawley. Have a great week.